Now, here comes the music. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock in Chicago. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Hey, everyone. It's Buddy with a DJ Roundtable tonight. And as always, always got honored by some great DJs here tonight. And, you know, it's always great to see a lot of people. And hopefully you're tuning in here in uh, in Twitch. If you're not watching on Twitch, you're watching this on YouTube. As I'm trying to move uh, stuff from one screen to another screen because I have multiple screens going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you have not done so already, you know, like and follow the channel. And also don't forget to follow these other guys right here on their channels. They have a lot of great social media. Make sure you go to their social media, you know, Instagram, Facebook. A lot of the guys have TikTok. You know, you got TikTok out there. Um, and make sure you follow them on their social media and follow their journeys for everything they do. And uh, help support this by following them and giving them love and showing them love and showing them support uh, for their endeavors. And again, if you get a chance to click that like button, hit the subscribe button and, uh, you know, join in on the fun and uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. Hopefully you'll, I'll learn a couple of things. Uh, <laughs> we were just talking a little before we started the show uh, about some updates and um, with Apple updates. Now I know, you know, a lot of people, a lot of DJs use PC. A lot of DJs use Apple. It's personal preference. I'm a I'm a PC person. I like my gaming laptops. I have them custom built, um, somewhat uh, from uh, Exindia. Uh, they do custom built computers uh, and custom built laptops. I have I have them build. You go in there, and you build your computer on there, which is pretty cool. And you, you add things, take away things, and and uh, uh, change things around, which is great. So I don't run into some of the same problems. Windows, we all know Windows does its own thing. Sometimes you do updates and it causes troubles. But, you know, I wanted to hear from the guys who are Apple product fans what they run into. And I know, uh, cool thing, you're a big Apple fan. Yeah, I've been using Mac for, like, yeah, I've been using Macs for 10 years, never had a single problem. And even with the updates, I never have a single problem whatsoever. You never run into a problem with the updates. They always work. They always work for you. Nope. It always it always it always works for me. The only time it freezes up on me is if I'm <clears> outside, <throat> but that's from the humidity and just mother nature and mother nature in general. Yeah. What about the uh, Brettley? What about you? What do you run into with uh, with your uh, computer? Well, the most recent issue I've had is I have my new laptop. It's got the, the newest updated syst operating system on it, and the battery just keeps depleting till and it won't start recharging until it's right around five to 10%. And it started slowing my computer down on Friday night when I was at a club. And luckily I was on an XTJ, which I know using that plus running video, it was taxing my, it was taxing the computer. Like I could really, you could almost feel it when you're like, I was moving the fader. It was like a slow delay at times. I look at the video screen and I had it when I started the night, I had the video screen set for the delay correctly. So from where I'm at to when it gets to everything else, it's like a point two something off. So it didn't sound look funny as the vocals, but I wound up looking at my battery and having to go to the XDJ and stop mixing off my computer for a few minutes. And that kind of wigged me out. And yeah, I'm not a big fan of the XDJ now. It's definitely, the more and more I play with it all in one deck, it's just not my thing. It doesn't have, it's a lot more, it's clunkier than using a real deck in your computer, in my opinion. And the other issue I had was when Big Sur came out, 2020-ish, uh, I want to say. And Recordbox said, yeah, you can go ahead and use it. It's fine now. Went and used it, tried to use it my first gig with it out. And even though the update was correct, it didn't work. I could hit play, but my crossfader wouldn't work. And my faders up and down, they were all locked in one volume level. So luckily I did have my backup at that night. And I was able to pull, you know, just use that. But the updates versus technology being ready to go with it has been a big, like, downfall. So I know Serato, like when, yeah, it was Big Sur came out for Serato too. You guys had the same issues that, yep, I, and people were reverting back to their old operating systems. But the upside of it all, unlike, you know, using a PC, installing stuff is so much simpler. 
it's streamlined and that right there in itself for me like when i'm having to run the record box update for example two clicks agree it's done and all i have to do is restart the app whereas on a pc i've seen one of the guys i work with have to and i'm like wow and it, it's a little bit more of a pain in the neck but so that's the uh, uh, one of the bigger things i do like about using macs apple music is kind of cool because you can actually take apple music and sync all of your computers that are on that pass that shared setup but it won't put it won't send my cue points through so it's just a backup if anything goes wrong for me that's what and plus now dropbox works effortlessly with record box so if anything ever goes wrong or if i have a song i can't find i can just grab it from the cloud and drag it into my app so that's those are the benefits that i'm a bigger fan of the updates maybe they'll get it together someday but who knows if you look at yeah, if you if you look at the modern Macs, they have a, the M1 M2 processor, and just imagine how much of a difference that makes for us DJs. Compared, I, to, you know. one of my friends got the M2, and he did a set the other day and was raving about it. <laughs> it. Like he said, it took him less than five hours to get his entire library uploaded with all of his points and everything. And he said, like, like when he was streaming stuff, running video, and all that. It was, there was no glitching, computer worked perfectly. Kind of like when High Sierra came out and I got my 2016 laptop. It was, like, there was nothing wrong with it. I think you're on mute, buddy, if you're talking. I'm sorry, I was talking to the boss. <laughs> no, my bad. Just making sure. Making I'm, listen, sure. I'm listening to you guys, and it, it's it's one of the things that you know. I, I one of the chatters here is saying it. He had the same problem for Big Sur as well with Serato, um, with with it not working right. And you know, it, it's it's always a hard thing when you look at you know computers and software. Like, I feel a lot of people go very cheap. A lot of people go very cheap on uh, the computer, and because they go very cheap, uh, they uh, really they really don't um, have good computers to run stuff off of. Low RAM, low processors. You know, I've seen guys out there with i3 processors on PCs. I've seen guys with you know, and again, MacBooks. You know, they, they hold their own pretty much, but when Apple starts upgrading their software, a lot of times the older processors seem to not work as well with the newer software. Um, that's all by design. Yeah, well... We, oh, we yeah, know they, what they, Apple's doing. They like know, anything, you know, they want you know want to build something that you, want, you buy a new one. And, yeah. and I know Apple's are not cheap. Even though I know Apple right now, they have a lot of their stuff on sale because there's a, a rumor, right? a couple people are saying that, you know, oh, this Apple's on sale, this Apple's on sale. Maybe they got a new M3 chip coming out or something like that. I don't know. And whatever Apple's doing, it's, it's <clears throat> Apple's world. We just all live in it. <laughs> but, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do a gaming laptop because heavy duty cooling, very powerful processors, lots of RAM, good size hard drives. And also because of way the laptops where I buy them from, if something happens, I can swap stuff out very quickly. And again, there, there's there's ins and outs to Windows as there is to you know Apple software. And there's no right or wrong. You you oh you you use you don't use Apple, you're a bad DJ. If you use if you don't use a PC, you're a bad. DJ. No, you as a DJ have to use what you feel is best for your business. And you know DJ Cool thing, you know he runs he loves Apple. He's an Apple fan. God bless him. You know and you guys both have apples. That's that's great. I'm not an Apple fan, so I won't use it, but. I understand the reason why you guys do it. And I know a lot of DJs, all oh, Apple, you just plug and play, you plug something, and it works. Uh, PC, yeah, there's a few more steps you have to do. But if you know what you're doing, you don't run into a problem. But one of the things I never run into a problem with is overheating because those gaming PCs, they have big, huge vents, big, huge cooling fans, and they blow a lot of air. I'd much rather, as Tracy has said it multiple times, she goes, what's wrong with that computer? It sounds like it's ready to take off. It sounds like a jet engine. I'm like, it's keeping itself cool. It's regulating the processor speed and the, the GPU and the CPU. The GPU is not so much a big thing for doing video on the screen, but virtual DJ with stems, 
that now uses the GPU more than the CPU. And because of that, if you have an Apple, Apple with stems doesn't work too well on the uh, new 2.0 on virtual DJ on the M1 and older uh, processor chips. So it, it's one of the things that, you know, I'm sure they're going to look for workarounds and fixes for it because they want all their other computers to work on that stuff. But what other things do you see? And uh, Braylon, you were, you were talking before we started the show a little bit about the little problem you had, a little hiccup. And how did you overcome yours? Well, I mean, so I just let people know I use Mac as well, but I also use Serato. Um, what I like to make sure is, is whenever Mac updates, you know, I guess their newest update, I do not update my laptop until basically until I get an email, usually from Serato saying, hey, we've done the modifications that we need to on the new software update, blah, blah, blah. It's good to go, yada, yada. And I even will still usually wait a little bit longer um, just to play it safe. Um, because I mean, there's, there's been a time where I did, uh, download the, um, newest update and, you know, the drivers for, uh, the, cause I have the DDJ 1000 SRT, which has, you have to install the proper driver into your Mac for it to work properly. Um, and so I, I did that. Luckily I didn't have an event very soon. I was able to realize it didn't work well. I reverted it back to my old, uh, the older processing system that I had, the old update, um, and just waited for Serato to be like, hey, it's all in the clear. We've fixed all the bugs. We're good to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of the struggle I've run into, but it's, I've learned my lesson and it's fine. Like you just you learn and you go. Um, but one thing I will say, I mean, buddy, I agree with you. You should use what you feel comfortable with. Um, I've always been a Mac guy. I use PC as well, especially for like my nine to five job I have. So I'm familiar with it. And what I've realized is that Mac is very, they they go under the umbrella of ease of use, nice and like easy and simple format for people to use. While PC, if you know what you're doing, you can fine tune and modify the heck out of your PC, I think a lot more than a Mac. So like you said, buddy, if you know what you're doing and you understand, you can make it the way you want. But what I like about Mac, how you said, Brett Lee, it's most of the time plug and play because they care more about ease of use and simplicity for their users versus PC. They focus more on the, you can do whatever you want. You can modify and do this and that. Um, so that's the two different ways I look at PC versus Mac. So there ain't, there is no wrong way and wrong, the best one to use. It really isn't. And that's, that's one of the things that, you know, we, we uh, have to look at is what is, what what is in the toolbox and we don't want to, have too many too many tools in the toolbox. We also want to make sure that we have more than enough tools in the toolbox and have options for ourselves, you know, having backups and so forth and so on. And I always felt that, you know, Apple, again, the other thing with Apple I'm not a big fan for is usually they're smaller screens, you know, they're, you know, 15 we're inch or so forth. Yeah, we're, I we're, also don't want to carry around a 20 pound laptop and try to have it well, sit on the know, stand. I, I, no, I used to have a PC. Screen, I, used, you know. right. I used to have a PC and that thing was just darn heavy. But like you said, cooling fans, all that jazz. But like the screen, I swear, was like a, it was a unit. But I got scared a few times with the laptop, laptop stand that I had. I was like, this thing's a little rickety. I was like, oh. <laughs> you got to invest in some good laptop stance. Oh, for sure. And I did. I did. I did after that. But I used <laughs> I used a PC for like about a year or two. Um, and then I upgraded and got the Mac that I have now. But I, I will tell you, I use a 17.3 inch screen, uh, not because I have anything problem with my eyes or anything like that. And I know some people, you know, well, you know, you need it. I, I have it because so it's I just nice to have. Yeah, it's nice to have. Yeah, it's, it's nice to multitask. And it's nice to have that I can actually have up you know, my, my software have virtual DJ up. If I'm running, you know, if I also can have up you know, another screen, like to check for record, for record pools like that. If I'm looking for a song I don't have, I can go into and say, okay, pull the song down live. Um, so it, it's kind of nice to have a little bigger screen than a 15 inch, you know, two and a half, two and a half inches or two and a quarter inches. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds a lot. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's like, uh, you know, anything else, it's what you feel comfortable with. Now everyone wants to have a big screen, and a heavy weight. I don't mind the weight so much. Again, it's in, in the scheme of things, we got speakers, we got controllers, we got everything else we're hauling in. So a, a, a 10 pound computer versus a, a two pound computer, they all go on the cart, they all get real wheeled in. So, <laughs> but 
you know, the, the, the big thing is that right now, like today, um, basically starts the, uh, out in Vegas, the, uh, expo out there for DJ gear and for photo booth and, uh, DJ Rachel, which has been on the show before, um, just a few weeks ago. I mean, haven't watched it yet. Her episode is, uh, here on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're here live on Twitch, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch that, uh, show with DJ Rachel, but she was on the floor going through stuff and looking at stuff and all these cool, great things for photo booth and for DJ stuff, uh, running into a few people. And I want to ask you guys, if you had a choice, if you had right now, if someone said, hey, you know what? I'll give you two tickets to paradise. There's a little Eddie Money kind of pun there. <laughs> and uh, your paradise was a show. Who would you take with you? And which show do you want to go to? Would it be Nam? Would it be uh, DJ Show Shot Show? Or would it be what? Would, what show would it be? What show would your uh, your show you had to go to? And who would you bring with you to share that experience with? All paid, all paid. I'm not. I'm not good. I'm not doing this. No one out there watching right now. I'm not doing this for you guys. I'm not. There's no money here for me. I'm not paying for this. This is a fantasy thing. This is a list. <laughs> so I want no one emailing me. Hey, buddy, did I win that? No, <laughs> this is not a game. This is if if I won the million dollars, the billion dollars, like uh, you know, I had a couple times for the lottery, then I would say, hey, you know, to these guys, like, hey guys, you want to meet up at one of these shows? What show do you guys will go to? I would do that because that's the kind of person I am. But if you had someone give you two tickets, where would you go? Who would you take? Uh, cool thing. No, one of you two can go because. <laughs> I might need some extra. I don't time. mind going. I'll I'll start. Okay, uh, Braylon. I'm either picking between Nam or Expo. Um, I I'm I'm not partial towards one or the other necessarily. I think it'd be a great experience to go because Expo it's Expo going on right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Expo. So I just for the heck of it, I'll just say Expo because it's currently going on right now. I'd love to do that because I would love to go see like the showrooms. Um, I'd love to go see what all's out there and just the different vendors and different people that's like the suppliers things like that i'd love that um and then any of the like forums anything like that that they have too like the you can go to like the where the you'll have like certain speakers talk i would love just to like gain and like learn knowledge i think it'd be so fun um but the person i would take honestly i'd probably take uh oh yeah i would definitely take my uh what i who i consider like my dj mentor uh his name's john he uh has his own company uh rock the planet uh dj wedding and event entertainment um He's my guy. Me and him go way back. He uh, actually was my football coach back in middle school and worked our way up. And whenever I became a DJ, he kind of took me under his wing. So I would definitely take him just to have that experience. And you'll be darn sure that I'll be buying him one item of whatever he wants, just as like a thank you. I would totally do it. Um, he's a great guy. So definitely at Expo and take John with me. We'd have a great time. DJ Expo is in New Jersey. That's in August. Oh, wait. So which one's going on right now? That's the uh, oh god, what's what's the show called? I mobile, I think it's yes. Mobile Entertainment Expo. Yeah, Mobile. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mobile yeah. Mobile Entertainment. So I would, I, and I can't decide between that one or Expo because I know I, I I got the names mixed up because I know the ones in New Jersey. Um, but I would go to either. I'd go to the, either the one in Vegas or the one in Jersey. Um, to go to Jersey, I'd love to meet like the Jersey DJs and like those that kind of crowd just because it's like I consider it like the mecca of yeah. like weddings and stuff so i do both yeah. but yeah and it's currently at the south point casino hotel in las vegas yeah and that's the mechs right um, yeah yeah that's pretty cool all right so brettley what about you what what show do you want to go to it's a and tough call there's marquee coming up in june here in chicago See, that's, it's, oh, that's right. it's, between, yeah. it's between marquee and mechs May Max, I have an interest in because I wouldn't mind dropping a set on opening night. Not gonna lie, doing that for Midwest DJs live, I, I, I still get goosebumps because you know the kid was there watching the whole time, and you've got the five, you got the five serve on my right, downtown Milwaukee behind me. We're at the top floor of the high, and it's like, well, wow, and there's nothing but DJs in front of you. So if you screw up, you're gonna screw up in a. <laughs> So I, I won't lie. I think I was downstairs for about 20 minutes chain smoking before I came back upstairs to drop my set. But 
See, I, would probably, I, 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 will, I will say this, you're a brave man, because, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's, if you screw up in front of a bunch of DJs as DJs, you know, they're not going to let you forget it ever. Oh, you also got you got to be like a bat. You got to be more like a battle DJ too to really like, really kind of I don't know. We'll say show out like those battle DJs. Oh yeah, cool. tough. <laughs> well, and see when I did my set for that, I I went at eighteen songs in fifteen minutes, maybe even nineteen. I think eighteen or nineteen songs. And my objective at that point was I'm not I'm not scratching. I'm not doing anything. But I had been on a real big DJs from Mars kick at that point. And listening to their year-end mini mega mashups that are like 10 minutes long, I'm like, that's what I want to do live this year. And my now ex-girlfriend, it could have been, a, it was a month before the show, and I'm practicing this set 20, 30 times a day, every day. And by the, yep. And by the time we got there, she didn't even want to hear anything about it. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll shut up. But with that, I would probably lean towards Max because one, the DJ showcase and the other part of it is definitely the learning experience. There's so many speakers for this one this year that I'm really kind of sad being the business partner didn't decide to go. We were going to go last year, but then a few things came up and we decided just do Midwest DJs live next year. I would be inclined to do both, but I would definitely submit again to both shows and see if I could get onto either one of them. All right, cool thing. Now it's your turn, <clears throat> Hunter. Where would you go, and who? Who? Oh, wait, wait, Brentley. Who do you bring? Yeah, who would you bring? Uh, uh, probably the business partner. Honestly, there's not, not the little one. I am not bringing my daughter to Las Vegas. Are you silly? No, there's, there's, there's there for... nothing to do for children in Vegas, buddy. There's, there's, there's there's nothing. Exactly. I mean, there's. There's, I've been, every one of my friends who's been there, I have told, I've sent everyone to Vegas to find me a shirt for Mabel's, where the customer always comes first. I don't want to go in there. I just want the shirt. And now one of my friends has been brave enough to walk there and get one for me. So that would be, that would be my main objective of that trip. Stop, you up. <laughs> for the, well, the business it, partner. If I if I won the lottery and I would send you there, your business partner, I would definitely make sure that uh, she has her own fund. Then when dad's away, she I would make sure she would play it again. This is fantasy. If I won the lottery, I would do this. You know, this is not not happening. Not not happening right now. But I would make sure she would like go to like Disney or something like that. You know, something fun, some fun, some fun place. And then Braylon, what about you? Who would you take to uh, the show? Me, no, I said I would take my uh, my mentor, uh, John. Your mentor, uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I would take. Okay, that's right. You did say that. Okay, yeah, cool yeah. thing. All right. Um, I'll just go to the the show that we can see all the new DJ tech like controllers and stuff like that. Like, I think it's Nam. Nam. Yeah, well, I'll go to Nam. Now, Nam is more designed for the stores and for buyers. It's for purchasing. Uh, that's one of the things with Nam shows more geared for that. So you see not only just DJ gear, you see guitars, you see drum sets, you see sound systems, you see stuff that is not just for DJs. You see stuff that is for venues, like, you know, everything from a local bar to the, you know, an amphitheater, you know, that holds, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 or a stadium. So that's playing with the big dogs. You want, Nam is huge too. It's, it's like, what like five times the size of, or six times the size? I heard of it's show. like I think I heard they have like multiple ballrooms that they yeah. use. So like, that yeah. right there would be like that. That right there would be really cool. I know oh, some guys would go there. And if I did, if I did go to Nam, I would mostly check out the controllers and stuff, the stuff that's geared geared towards mobile DJs. Boys, I say we uh, we should plan something. <laughs> <laughs> we should pick one. We should budget. Yeah. We should and budget for it. And we should all go. Uh, you saying? I mean, I'm not going to say I don't have the extra cash because since the girlfriend and I split up, all the money I was kind of putting aside. Oh, you're great. You're fine. You're good. <laughs> I, I had a I had a great plan for it, and you know, after my gig in Stadium View in Green Bay after St. Patrick's weekend, but I'm going to keep putting that money aside. And maybe I'll buy an S11 or some CDJs this year. There you go. So cool. The business cool. partner is like. Your toad is coming in April. We talked toad. It'll be at Midwest DJs Live. 
So we'll take it home from there. He's like, you got to put a tech in there, but put some, uh, put the S11 and some 12s in there. I'm like, eh, but I do have to figure out what's going to go inside this thing at some point. So uh, cool thing. Who would you uh, take with you to uh, NAM? That's hard to decide because I know so many DJs that I definitely would take. But if I had to pick someone, it would definitely be you, TV. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate I'd, that. I'd definitely you to come. <laughs> wow. That, that, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Bring the cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, you you gotta you gotta get a shirt. Again, you gotta go to Vegas then on the way back and get a shirt for <laughs> for Bradley so that we can give him a shirt for Mabel's. Um, man, I gotta I, I, I gotta see if I could talk to someone who's out there in Vegas. I know that uh, goes it, but I would actually, if I wanted, if I was going to travel, I would do DJ Expo East in New Jersey because of the disc jockey news people that I know. And also, I've been on the Dish Jackie News. I've been very blessed to be on uh, a couple of their episodes there. We're hanging with Holly um, on Dish Jackie News. I have a lot of friends there, uh, a lot of great people. And uh, uh, it, it is something that I do support very heavily, uh, their show. And it, that's one of the things that I love. Um, I, I feel very honored being on the, on there with hanging with Holly. And I'd love to go there and see all the people that go there who are part of this jockey news and talk to them all uh, there. I know um, some may be coming here to Chicago for, um, for marquee um, and get you guys come here for marquee. Uh, if you decide to come here for marquee, uh, make sure that uh, you hit me up. Um, I am going back and forth if I want to go or um, if uh, I may stay away depending on how busy I am. Uh, if I'm really busy, like I was last year, and it was hot, um, I was still able to go to dinner with uh, one of my uh, friends from Disc Jockey News um, from the Chill Room, and it was it was awesome. Took him to a, a couple of Chicago pizza places, and also uh, DJ Rachel. I, I still have the invitation out for her uh, for this year. If she would like to come with Tracy and I, and we'll take her out for dinner for pizza. And if someone else wants to come join us, uh, I do have an F350 crew cab. So there's plenty of room, plenty of seats, and a whole turn back to back. Boy, got a big boy, baby. That's right. That 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 six point seven diesel, man. <laughs> I hear it every time I get on the streets. I mean, down here in Texas, <laughs> everyone's got two fifties, three fifties, four fifties, forty five hundreds, whatever you want to call them, and it they're all just loud as can be. Oh, it's like mine's not loud. Yeah. I, it's all factory. It, it's I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yours isn't. I'm all factory. It, it's Come a, down yeah, here, yeah. brother. It's just yeah. here, black smoke. Hey, you want to know? Let me tell you guys something crazy about what you see here in Carolina, in the in South Carolina. Go you ahead. see <laughs> squatted, like when you see trucks and SUVs, some of them are squatted. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. Those we are dirty. Them, those are dirty. Yeah, which we call the Carolina squat. Little uh, little side note, buddy. Uh, Good old uh, Dallas, so you know the uh, the town that shall not be named to my east. <laughs> um, got a Portillo's. There you go. I'm trying to go because I've heard nothing but great things about Portillo's and what is it, the cho- chocolate cake shake, right? The cake shake. They yeah. take yeah. A, you go on YouTube and you can watch a video. They take a whole piece of their chocolate cake and they put it into the container. And they add vanilla ice cream and chocolate to it, and they blend it up. And yeah, you have chunks of you. So when you get a cake shake, you get a spoon and you get a straw. Okay. And it's like, you know, when you're a little kid, when you have cake and ice cream together, think of that. Sure. With yeah. a very decadent chocolate cake. Let me tell you, I'm going to make a trip out to Dallas here soon, and I'm going to take pictures, and you'll be the first person I send it to. I'll be like, all right, Chicago's best. We're doing it, Portillo's. I've heard great things. I, 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 you know, I will say this: uh, Portillo's has some good stuff, but I am not a fan for the hot dogs or Italian beef. That's fine. There's better, better. Places. It's more mainstream, right? It's more mainstream. It's not like it, it. I mean, I know it's like a Chicago thing, but it's not like. It's it's again. It, it, they have they have multiple locations. I have one five minutes from me in my town. I have one. I have one in the town north of me. 
I, they're all they're all over the place uh, and yeah. they have long lines. They 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 have phenomenal customer service. They have really good food. I just don't like natural casein hot dogs. I like the skinless hot dogs. I like sure. there's other Italian beefs I like because I think they're a little too garlicky. But it, it's like anything else. If you want, if you came here, there's Portillo's is is good. And again, I've had I have Portillo's for dinner. You know, you know, uh, I will tell you their hamburgers are really good. Uh, their chicken tenders are actually f- fantastic. The one by me has a Barnelli's, which has pasta, which Tracy loves her pasta from them. Um, and then chocolate clear cake they have. That's also awesome, too. You know, I'm a fat guy. So, you know, what can I say? But <laughs> it, it, it's one of the things that they do have some really great stuff and they have really great customer service. I would never uh, say anything bad about Portillo's. But like for the, if you wanted to go to a place where you say, hey, where, you, where do you go for a beef? I would take you for a place for a, a Italian beef. I feel it's better. That's sure. my personal opinion, but, or also a place for hot dog. Super dog would be my number one pick for hot dog. Cause that's not far from my old stompy grounds where I grew up in. I literally grew up within a mile of super dog. Um, and my mother grew up in that same area. So she was with actually a few blocks of super dog, but it, it's one of the things that um, if you're going to come here, I definitely have places that would take you um perfect and that would be awesome uh yeah but say not to make this a food review channel at all but you know i just wanted to at least say that uh we got a good old portillo's so oh, i'll yeah. let you know when try i go it out. try try it try it out it's good stuff again sure. the cake shakes phenomenal the burgers are amazing uh again italian beef if you've never had italian beef before it is thinly oh, sliced roast beef in a uh gravy that's garlic and oregano Get it dipped, and if you like spicy, get the jaranara. Get, get at least get your jaranara on the side. It's it's I'm jalapenos and carrots and celery and, and olive oil, and it's, it's kind of like really. It's not finely ground, but it's kind of like um, not paste, but it's kind of like a chunky like relish. And then sweet peppers are green peppers. They boil them in the uh, jus, mm-hmm. and then you get mozzarella cheese on top. So you can get sweet, hot. Uh, dipped, which you want the whole entire sandwich dipped in, the, in there, get get loaded with sauce, with, with gravy, and get some mozzarella on top. Just make sure you get neck and fork and plenty of napkins because it is a, a yeah. little mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with pizza or burgers. They go, oh hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. Uh, again, welcome to the DJ round table. And um, hopefully, uh, if you have a question after that, please fill it down there. And again, if if you come to Chicago, you guys are watching right now, you know, f- you can go to my Instagram and you want to ask, hey, buddy, where where would you go for this or that? Ask. If you guys are coming to Marquee, again, like before, if you're coming here, say something. I will tell you where to go for stuff that you're, it's not the tourist trap. It's where, like, where I go living here in the Chicagoland area. And I live you're out. You're going to make me go to Marquee. Place, but... So great. You're going to make me wind up at Marquee. <laughs> You're, yeah. you're now making me think of like, okay, I want to go to Melnick's downtown, even though I don't want to get shot or stabbed. I want their wings, <laughs> and now I've got a list going on in my head of every spot I would want to stop at. Well, I, I, again, um, I get 19 miles to the gallon in my F350, so it's pretty decent mileage, and for a big truck. So if you want to go to a couple places, that would take you, and you know that we don't drive, you know, because <laughs> you know it, it's 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 one of the things that. Uh, you know, the people who hang out here on the show, it's people who I'd hang out with in real life. If they were closer, trust me, I would be like, hey, guys, what are you doing Friday or Saturday night? Let's all go out together. It's because the fact that, you know, everyone here are are people who I feel are, are good DJs and give a lot of information. And hopefully you guys learn some stuff and, you know, pass yourself on to you. This is what the show is about. The show is about, you know, helping and sharing our knowledge and, and helping you guys out. And don't fall in the same pitfalls we fell into. And just, you know, want be we all want to be better DJs. You know, we want to do better business owners. We want to do better business and grow our business. And I know, like Hunter, you know, he he does great amount of business there in, you know, South Carolina. Right now, he hasn't had any weddings in a little bit because of COVID. Hopefully, he'll get a couple this year. Hopefully, he'll get some stuff. He'll get back on his feet. But I've seen him DJ. I've seen his gig logs. He's an awesome DJ. I If, if I had to... If I had a, a customer, I had a subcontract in that area, I would definitely say, hey, you need to see Hunter. Same thing up up in Wisconsin, same thing down in, down in Dallas, Texas area. My question for DJ Cool Thing, what uh, 
what made you want to be, what made you want to become a DJ? Well, basically it just fell in my lap because my church was looking for someone who had a lot of music in a streaming service or you know on a computer or whatever to you know for this um block party that we were doing we were doing an outreach block party and seeing how how it was a natural of playing the right music at the right time to get people up and dancing that's what made me become a dj full-time so i just started out just doing family gigs and church events but then it started to become more of a more of a job more of a like a career and it's just it's just my love of music pretty much because as a child i had a lot of cassette tapes and cds to listen to on a boom box so it's just my love of music that turned into being a dj so what about you uh uh braylon what was your thing that put you into djing so the two-minute version um grew up having like a pretty decently eclectic knowledge of music with uh my father and stuff uh my parents they're uh they own a dance studio here in fort worth um so like just tons of music was always involved in my life and things like that also just like professional like showmanship kind of things with our like shows that we would put on like our recitals things like that watching my dad run them um speaking on a microphone things like that so i kind of just learned through osmosis um i was also the guy that was just known in you know middle school and high school as he knows all the music he knows tons of music things like that i was always a guy providing playlists things like that and i was like huh eventually music i was like this song would go well with this song merging in blah 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 and then i got into learning about different software and what you can do things like that um and then you know i got my first controller a buddy of mine he bought one never used it and he goes just take it and i said sweet so i got it started practicing got good at it um i got hired for my first event which was for my friend in high school his little sister who was thir uh, turning 13 her 13th birthday party i used my sound system from my parents dance studio which my dad goes like all out with a sound system for like a dance studio he had like enough to fill like a freaking ballroom <laughs> um so i would just take that go do the event bring it back plug it back in for the dance classes like nothing was touched and then i started making a little bit of money bought my own equipment and i really just kind of took off from there uh, started doing weddings fell in love with weddings um did some college parties things like that so um yeah i mean i really evolved and started doing mostly weddings uh corporate events birthday parties things like that but weddings is a soft spot in my heart and it's a lot of fun so that's my weddings know, are very <laughs> technically difficult and all of us being what you know, i love it i love that yeah i do too the challenge of it and uh brightly i know you have a background of djing and clubs and then yeah. you stepped over doing events and weddings and stuff like that. What what was your a catalyst that made you uh, first want to become a DJ? I've been working in a record shop in Chicago, the Record Exchange, and I didn't have a permanent spot at any one of their stores in the three they had. So I do Sundays at one st store, do a couple days early in the week at one store, and then do Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Belmont store. And with that was a guy named Leroy. And he ran the Medusa's video room and worked at the, ran the Vic box office around the Vic theater around the corner from the record shop. And I was working with another DJ there at the time, Wilbur, who used to be the main DJ at Club 950. He had every Friday, Saturday, all the special, you know, like when they used to do CD release parties and all that. So between the two of them, I'm really was learning about music, uh, just the dance, alternative industrial, and that sort of thing. And then at the Morris store, there was a... Now, I actually, when I was going through my crates and doing videos this week, uh, there was a jazz aficionado named Joe, and he turned me on to everything jazz I could possibly think of. And, and so with that, I had this really well-rounded music knowledge. And one day, Leroy and I were hanging out Medusa's, and he got a phone call. Like somebody had a, this is back in the late 80s, early 90s. Someone had to run up from the office, tell him he had a phone call. He had to run down three flights of stairs, run back up and tell me he had to leave. And I was DJing that night. And that that was it. I was in the right place at the right time. And it just started out. I do all the early, you know, half the night. Then he's like, you know what? Just do the whole night. And it's by the time they moved and closed down 
and this was summer of 90, summer of 93 or 94 when they closed the Congress Theater location, I found up getting a job down and on the main strip in downtown Chicago, dumbfoundedly, like it was just like put on my lap. And next thing I knew, I was really wearing a lot of hats. Uh, stop, Mira. But I was, you know, I, I was drinking way too much at that point, probably far too much for my own good. But that was what the Chicago club scene did to you at that era. And next thing I knew, I'm in Lacrosse, Wisconsin. And this is after I stopped playing in the bluegrass band or the punk band. My kids up here, and I'm running a club. And the next thing you know, I'm back in the booth. And found myself honestly hating, I, I hated being there at that point. It was August of 2017. And I literally went to a meeting with the owners going, can you just fire me? And this is the same as both a lot of headache. I don't want to walk out on you, but just fire me. And finally, a week later, and well, a, dr- a week later in a really, really drunk Saturday night at the booth, they're like, you can go now. I'm like, thank you. And then I realized I didn't have a backup job. So I'm like, uh, one of my friends who ran one of the wedding companies around here was like, come on board. And that's when weddings took off for me, but I didn't even want to do them because of how bad working for this company was. He was just leaving every, you know, like everything like 1980s John Lovitz or 90s Lovitz wedding singer and the really bad stigma of the company only looking out for themselves, not caring about the couples they're working for. The whole, every bad possibility that I could run into came up. The only complaints I've ever gotten were when I worked for this man. And so by the time of after working like four and a half, five months, I knew I was leaving. And at that point, I'd already started advertising on my own. And he was giving me a hard time about it. I'm like, sorry, I'm going to go do my thing now. But I didn't want to quit because I had one more wedding left. And that wedding was my rent for the entire month of January that year. So if I left, I was hopefully finding a few club gigs or maybe selling a guitar just to make rent. And at that point, I'm like, yeah, we're going to go and start booking our own things. And it just blew up. Thanks to Celebration Down the River, honestly. So here's a question to have the follow up on this one. Your the company you work for, are they still in business? Yeah, surprisingly, they still are in business. And, you know, you, Celebrations on the River, which I, again, you, I've watched your gig logs, uh, wonderful facility. Um, I and, you know, we, we talked off air about stuff, um, you know, brainstorming. Because uh, yeah. as, as DJs, it's always, you know, we all see things differently and look at things differently. And it, it, it's, <clears throat> it, he does a phenomenal job in that venue. And I watch what, you know, what, what, what Nathan does. I watch what uh, DJ Fire does. Watch what a lot of DJs do. And. Uh, DJ Fire, um, again, he still had his grandmother was in the hospital um, with a broken leg last week. He's not here this week. Uh, I hope to get him back up here, uh, hopefully next week. Um, but, you know, DJ Mike James, all these guys, I watch these guys' videos um, because of the fact that I want to learn stuff and also see how they do stuff, how they, you know, comprehend their, uh, you know, comprehend things and how they uh, go about and figure out how they overcome problems and we all run into problems and again he goes all the time to one venue uh, quite a bit and he has it down pat and there's certain venues i go to i have it down pat but if i had to walk into that venue what would i do and that was the thing is that you know we talk about the stuff and you know uh, braylon the same thing some of the things i see what he does is some of the things i do but and some of the things i shared with him again off air about what i would do you know and we brainstorm back here and same thing with cool thing we all of us you know and if matt's here we i brainstorm with him if you know nathan's here i brainstorm with him and the reason why is that you are looking at one way and tracy my wife who also works with me looks at you know another way and then one of these guys look at and go hey what with this what with that oh hey what you do this you do that you know uh and it helps you out, helps you grow. It challenges you as a DJ and makes you a better DJ. And to me, that is the important thing that we all want to be. We want to be the better DJ. <laughs> and again, the, the company that, that Brentley worked for that didn't care about the customers and stuff like that is the reason why Brentley in his air market has a bunch of awards. You know, uh, I have a bunch of awards for myself, for my market, for the not. 
and wedding wire. And that is all how you drive customers. And Braylon, you you have a couple of words, right? Uh, so I honestly wasn't even with the knot or wedding wire even that long uh, to even get an we'll award. Say, reap the benefits of getting awards, we'll say. Okay. <laughs> and cool thing, I know you're not on the knot. Uh, but the thing is that you you get any kind of, you, you, again, I know you get accolades and, you know, you get uh, from customers saying, hey, great job, great DJ service. Either give you a Google review or they give you a review somewhere, but you can actually yeah, point to those reviews. Yeah, that's I'm not, yeah, I'm not on Google, which I tried and I gave getting people bullying me, harassing me, so I just took it down off Google. Oh, that's so, fine. Yeah. But that that's that, that, that right there, those are, you know, numbskulls that don't want to cause trouble, but it's one of the things that those and those people who are you know who service in the past, those are also ref, could be ref, future referrals, but they're great references too. So if you have a customer that you've been to a venue, oh hey, you know, I did Bob and Sue's wedding there uh, two years ago. Here, if you want to talk to Bob and Sue, let me talk to them first. Hey Bob and Sue, do you mind talking to Jim and Mary? Do they have questions and ask you about how I was as a DJ? You know, how do you want to contact? You know, email, phone number, whatever. Hey, you know, you, you two hook up, you guys talk. So there's ways around Google, there's ways around the knot, there's ways around wedding wire and so forth and so on that you can still connect people and have them talk to each other. And it's peer-to-peer -peer relationship as peer-to-peer -peer review, which is also really good too. But having that stuff right there, winning, you know, awards, obviously you're doing something good. And the other company who doesn't care about the customers, I I'm sorry to see they're still in business because all four of us here, and if I add in Matt and I add in uh, Nathan, you know, DJ Fire and DJ uh, DJ Salsas and most other DJs, we have a business. We want to make money, not only to pay our bills, but, you know, maybe expand our business, buy new things, buy a toll bag booth, you know, buy <laughs> new speakers, buy a new controller, you know, um, all that cool stuff, all the cool toys we like to have. And if we don't have the money, we can't do that. Well, you know doing the job the right the first time is a huge, huge thing. And that is a big thing that drives you. Plus, it's something that when you talk to customers, it gives you confidence when you talk to them about what you could do, your experience, how you're doing, how you're set for success, especially if you've been to the venue many times before. Uh, this past week, we had a wedding show. Um, and I could tell you probably maybe about, Three quarters of the people we talk to, it's venues we've been to before. And we were talking about how we do it for that venue and the pitfalls, the plus and minuses for that venue. Not to sound bad, so they know exactly walking in what exactly that the venue offers and what we've seen and how we know we know about beforehand so we don't get into that trap of what do we do now? You know, and that's that's a great thing of having that understanding of venues. Now, um, I know we have a few minutes left of the show. So I'm going to go around and ask the yes, no question of this week. <laughs> so that way we get that going here. And uh, the yes, no question of this week. Um, are you looking to add on another DJ to your business? Would you or would you okay. add on another DJ to your business? So okay. DJ Cool Thing, would you add another DJ or add a DJ on to your business? Either this year or next year? Absolutely not. I like to work alone. I like to have my own personal space. And I just like to work alone. Okay. But I do have my own my roadies. Well, I know, I know. But if I wanted to DJ with you, if I wanted to hang out with you, would you let me hang out with you? As a special guest, and yeah. Oh, well, there you go. See? You have me. You have your personal roadie. <laughs> yeah, I, you, ever come up, you ever come up here? You ever come up here, Hunter? And I have a wedding. You want to hang out with me and Tracy? You're more than welcome to. I'd be honored to. And, and as well as any of you guys. So, Bradley, what about you? Would you? I would you add another DJ, or do you want to add another DJ onto your business? For personally, no. But for the ever after side of it all. Yes. And in fact, I hired one more two weeks ago now. So I'm doing something that is against my better judgment, but the dollar signs are really starting to show through. I'm going to be training, fully training two DJs on. And I have until June to get them ready. 
The third one I brought on over the winter, because she's the wife of one of my other DJs and works at one of the wedding venues that I'm in celebrations, she knows the inside and out of it. She knows what's expected, how to do all the formalities. She just needs to learn how to mix. So that's a real big learning curve right there. And she's a musician. So you understand set building, theory. I can show you how to mix, give you some pointers, and you're off to the races. But the two I just brought on, the most recent ones I brought on, I'm really going to – we're we're doing Blueprint with them, actually. We're going to try it. Uh, Dave Osborne's thing, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've got both of them signed up to that. So we're going to let them run through it. Then we're going to start doing the practical application of it all. And luckily, in a month or so, I'm taking the apartment upstairs from this house. So I'll have my office and training area for people to come over and do all that with me. But, cool. yeah, I would easily take on more. At this lacrosse, And like I was saying before, lacrosse being the wedding capital of this area, I was at a, one of the tastings at Celebrations on Sunday. And when I realized that between myself and the company, out of the 40 couples we met, I talked to over the weekend on Sunday, we had 35 plus of their weddings. So at that point, yeah, I can train and I can use celebrations as my training ground. The whole nine yards. It's a hand in hand thing. Now I do a lot of free stuff for them too. Like when they wanted sparks for my photo for their photo shoot for the winter. Here you go. Here's my sparks. When they wanted, you know, X, Y, and Z for some other stuff, I'm just dropping my gear off, letting them put it where they want and go. But yeah, I'm definitely taking on more. Cool. What about you, Raylan? DJ, no. Assistant, yeah, probably. Um, so DJ wise, I mean, the way my business is set right now, I'm not at the scale to where I need the second DJ. I can handle everything myself as of currently. Now, I do see that at changing in the next few years, but definitely not right now. And I don't foresee it to be in the next two years. Um, I want to get overwhelmed so much that I'm like, okay, I need a second person. Um, we're second DJ, we'll say. But I will say that getting like a, a decently full-time assistant or like, I mean, technically be part-time, but available when I could get them. I would love to have that. And I'm just, I don't know. It's been doable to do things by myself, but there are times that I'm like, you know what? It'd be nice to have extra hands or just things like that. So um, I'm, I'm with you. I'm still an independent DJ. My business is so small. I'm not big enough to hire another DJ. So that's why I like to work alone. I, like my sure. I don't feel pressured. I can just take my time. Oh just... yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing is, again, you gotta do what's best for your business. Yeah. Now, uh, I know, I know, cool thing. You, 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 you work with your parents. Your parents help you out. You yeah. know, and, and yeah, they do stuff with you. Like I, I, I work with my wife. You know, uh, she does a coordination time management, and she roadies as well. You know, she helps. She knows how to set stuff up. She, you know, helps me carry. You know, bring stuff in. She'll run out to the van, grab something from the van. You know, she she wheel she wheel carts in. You know, she's one talking to the facility manager. She she's very hands on. She knows stuff. And she kind of knows how to, to DJ a little bit. She doesn't know how to like beat, you know, beat match and stuff like that. But it's stuff that she knows a good amount about the business. And I do have two uh, part-time employees, actually three part-time employees. Uh, one can DJ, but he's in college. The other two are learning to DJ. One can uh, do pretty decent. And I, 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 I got to get him more beat matching, but I want to get him up and running 100% hopefully this year uh, with the, some of the weddings, but um, you know, it's one of the things you get to look at. You, you want strategic partners. You always want to partner with people. And I know that, you know, sometimes we have, you know, some people are part of multi-op, some people are not, some people are independent. Some people are just have, you know, small business. Some people have a little medium business. Some people are part of big businesses, but we all have to do what's best for our business. There's no right or wrong answer. And the reason I ask, you know, are you hiring or would you hire someone is that, you know, you have to think of where you want to be in, in this year and next year, year after that, you know, do you want to grow? Do you want to stay the same? And again, you have to do what's best for you, what you feel is best for you. There's no right or wrong answer. It's it's what you guys want to do and kind of get, you know, understanding of how, you know, again, how you're going to do stuff and what you're going to do stuff. And 
you know, especially talking to going to like, you know, your NAM or, you know, Mobile Beats or going to, you know, a DJ Expo or coming to hear the Marquee Show, that right there, you know, there's a lot of new gear coming out. You know, we want new gear. We have to pay for that gear. It's not free. There's no no gear tree out in, my, in the backyard. You can go up there and grab, hey, I need a new controller. Boom. I need a new speaker. Boom. So you got to have that business to, co- to uh, qualify for that pay, uh, that payment. Um, but the big thing is that, is there a part that you say, hey, I don't want to get too big. I don't want to grow more than this. Uh, is it because of the fact that you don't want to deal with the headaches? Like Hunter said, he doesn't want to deal with the headaches. He doesn't want to deal with multiple people. He wants to deal do a few gigs a year. He's fine with especially, that. He loves it. Especially being, yeah, especially being autistic. That can really get to me. Oh, yeah. And again, he, he's cool with that. And, you know, then you have, you know, like yourself, uh, you know, Braylon, you know, that you, you're you like, I'm going to bring a helper. I'm not going to bring another DJ in right now, but maybe in the future. And then, you know, Brentley, you're like, you know, you're part of a multi-op. You have a, a partner of a multi-op. You do your own thing, but you're also part of this multi-op. And yet you're training DJs for the multi-op. And maybe one of them could work for you and subcontract for you. And then, you know, it gives you some flexibility too, especially with your, your, your daughter and everything. Who always likes to come in and add oh, yeah. commentary. <laughs> but the, and with that, I mean, with the three days I'm training, I'm also kind of training some of the my competition in my downtown club scene here. Because two of them, yep, I worked with them, and now they're off to the races. One of them is really excelled at it. I mean, like, uh, he got some of the dates I wanted at one of the venues downtown. I'm like, you got them before me, dude? What are you doing here? But at the same time, uh, it was a stro- it was kind of a proud moment. I'm like, you're doing exactly what I I've taught you how to do. So with that, yeah, th- there's a certain pride factor in all of that. But yeah, it, there's going to become a point when I I am not taking on anymore. I I'm thinking that number might be like maybe ten DJs before I'm like that's enough for now. Wait a year or two. Let's see how everything balances out. And then yeah. see which direction to go. And that that's the way you want. You want to make sure you balance and do what's best for your business. DJ Fire's been talking in the chat a little bit too. Uh he wanted to see how sorry that he couldn't be here. Uh they're moving his grandma to a nursing home this week. Uh so it's it's crazy. And again, take care of grandma, DJ Fire, uh Nathan. You know, God be with her, God bless her. I'm glad to hear she's on the men. Uh hopefully she'll be back uh home doing her normal grandma stuff and, uh, you know, having fun. Uh, do you guys have a full-time job or are you doing this full-time? Well, I will answer that for myself. This is my full-time job. I, I own the business. Uh, my wife, Tracy, does this part-time. She works full-time. I concentrate in the business full-time because our business is big enough and busy enough to do that, and I need to concentrate on it. I worked before for corporations. Uh, my last corporation I worked for is Exxon Mobile Corporation, um, and I worked in the retail division, which um, no longer exists anymore. They sold it all off. Uh, but it was competing against my business. And when I left uh, at the time, they sold the Chicago market off to was Bucky's, which has now been bought. It's now transferred to Casey's. Um, I'm glad that I left the, that world and, uh, left management and, uh, uh, walked away because the fact that, uh, I'm glad I own my own business. And again, uh, Tracy, my wife, which works with me, she does this part-time. I do this full-time. So that's my thing. Nathan, uh, he does, has multiple businesses, including a landscaping business that DJ Fire down there. You see in the chat. Uh, he's also on the show too. Unfortunately, again, he's taking care of uh, his grandma. And um, we always send our prayers and help and hopes and wishes to her. Uh, he has a couple of businesses, including the DJ business. Uh, DJ Cool Thing, this is your full time job, or is this your part time yeah. job? Yeah, it's a full time job because ever since I got out of high school, since I am autistic, it's really hard for me to find a, the right job. So nothing seemed to be working out. I tried college, which didn't work out. Getting a job didn't work out. So I just became a DJ. There you go. Now, uh, Braylon, I know you have a full time job for a major retailing company. I'm not going to mention what name company is because we don't want any, you know, any conflictions there. So I'm not going to mention what company it is. Sure. Uh, but you work for a major retailer, uh, not retail yeah. as far as having retail stores, but having product in retail. Sure. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm in supply chain. Uh, I'm a logistics analyst for uh, 
I'll even go a little step further. A well-known golf company, we'll say that. Yes, like golf. Yeah, um, I, I, but yes, uh, logistics analyst for them, nine to five. Um, it's a decently recently new job, we'll say within the past year. Uh, so yeah, but I've been DJing for longer than I've been a been a logistics analyst. We'll say that. So. And uh, DJ Bradley already answered in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm only a DJ. I only have a real job. I think this is a real job. This is a full time job. It really you know, this is. is. This is this own your own business is a full time thing. And hopefully, Braylon, in that too distant future, you have not more enough business that you can say bye bye to your regular employer and do this full time. That uh, would be cool. It'd be cool. I enjoy what I'm doing, but would I love to like own my own business and kind of be able to? have my own thing go like officially like depend and rely only on that that'd be so much fun for sure you know it's great about being a mall dj you have you still have a lot more time with your family when you wait on the next gig there you go yeah and they're, they're own your own business again there's there's always pitfalls because you have no one to back you but you're and not sound bad i work for big corporations at exxon mobile you it's not much you don't get much bigger than them uh any corporation i work for i look for a lot of big ones it's one of the things that you can get let go at any time. And the higher you are in the company, the closer you are to the door. So <laughs> that's one of the things on your own business. Yeah, you, you, you. this is one of the reasons why we try to share things so we don't run into, uh, hopefully you guys out there run the same pitfalls as us. And uh, <laughs> we got a response. That is a funny response in the chat. And um, I can't thank you guys enough. And uh Mad uh Mad Boy, uh thank you for subscribing to the channel. Hopefully you'll be here for next uh episode next Tuesday night at eight o'clock. We are live on Twitch on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock here, the DJ round table. And hopefully DJ Fire will be back here next week after his uh grandma is uh on the men's and uh, in a home for recovering after her uh surgery for breaking a bone. And uh we wish her a lot of, a lot of, a lot of health, a lot of love, and speed recovery. So again. You guys out there watching, please subscribe to the uh, to YouTube, like, follow us on YouTube, and also come over here to Twitch and follow on Twitch. You can watch the show live, ask questions like people are here doing. And other than that, if you're, if you're new to the show tonight, I want you to come back. Again, next Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, we have a lot of times other DJs here too. We just had uh, DJ Rachel on here, which again, you watch the video in uh, YouTube. Uh, a couple weeks ago, she was on here, and hopefully I'll get her back here again uh, before Marquee. That's my next goal is to get her back here. And I'm working on a couple other famous DJs, too, off of YouTube. Uh, plus, uh, these guys have YouTube channels, too, and they're, they're more famous than I am on YouTube. So what am I talking about here? <laughs> but uh, you guys have a good day, and thank you all for watching tonight on Twitch. Peace.